So the title for today's presentation is Peggy Virus, Understanding the Good Boy Virus. So, so several um, scientific findings have suggested that an actively prevailing systemic ailment could alleviate, could reduce the, the pathogenesis manifestations of another disease, uh, some of which have led to key uh, therapeutic implications. So for instance, if the extrapolation of of a cowpox uh, pustular lesions against uh, deadly smallpox uh, virus and uh, several other uh, situations appears to uh, uh, exist. For instance, uh, the uh, beta thalassemia trait, uh, the sickle cell thalassemia trait, uh, amelio uh, reducing or, or uh, decreasing the intensity of malaria pathogenesis, the cystic fibrosis conferring resistance to, uh, to tuberculosis and and also to, uh, to secretory diarrhea and X-linked A gamma globulinemia conferring um, uh, some degree of resistance uh, to uh, infection by Epstein-Barr virus. And more recently, we have also witnessed that there is a likely trend of uh, uh, you know, negative impacts brought about by uh, the, uh, the, 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 the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Against, against dengue. So what we are witnessing at the moment is also that dengue seroprevalence have come down. Um, uh, probably there is something, some impact, the likely impact uh, that the, that the SARS-CoV-2 virus potentially may have on uh, decreasing the, the seroprevalence of, 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 of dengue infection. So we now have a virus, a similar kind of a virus. We have a virus uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus against dengue or, or a, a, a mycobacterium, you know, uh, cystic fibrosis uh, that confers pro protection against tuberculosis and secretory diarrhea. We have similar kind of a situation. We have a virus here and this time it's a, it's a virus. So we call this as, as a Peggy virus. So we have a virus which is called a Peggy virus, so which appears to be a, a, a good boy virus. So several findings suggest that this virus as, as, as an impact, has a, as a beneficial impact on uh, well-being of, of, of humankind. So what is Peggy virus and what is it all about? So it's a spherical virus, an enveloped virus belonging to uh, Flaviviridae and uh, uh, it, it, is a, it has a positive uh, sense, single stranded RNA genome. There are two serotypes of Peggy viruses. We have Peggy virus 1 and Peggy virus 2. This virus causes persistent infection. Unlike the other flaviviruses, the dengue virus and, and, and the other, you know, uh, the flaviviruses, so it, it rather causes a persistent infection, but this infection is not associated with hepatitis. The virus infects an individual, but it doesn't uh, cause any clinical symptoms. It doesn't rather cause any disease, which has very well been shown by several researchers. I have cited a few of these uh, findings um, um, uh, in this slide. The virus appears to have uh, uh, a negative impact on HIV disease progression. The virus, infect, I mean, infects an individual who has, who has, um, who um, subsequently, if he or she contracts HIV virus, then the the HIV disease progression becomes much uh, slower. And moreover, there are also several findings which tells that. The virus, the viral infection, the, the piggy viral infection can also improve the survival of HIV infected individuals. And of late, there have also been some uh, findings suggesting that piggy virus inhi inhibits also Ebola virus and also has a detrimental effect on, on HCV. The virus also appears to compete with H HCV and uh, it, it slows down. Uh, the, the disease progression of hepatitis C virus infection. Therefore, scientists, most of the scientists claim that this is this potentially could be a, a good boy virus. So coming to the discovery, why was this virus discovered? And, and what led to the discovery of this very important virus? In 1967, a surgeon with the initials GB inoculated his serum into uh, tamarins. So you see tamarins here. So these are tamarins. So and these tamarins subsequently developed hepatitis. 
and in 1995 abbott laboratories in the us it, abbott laboratories is situated in, in chicago in uh, i think it is in illinois so here this uh, a, a virus was was found in a west african citizen who developed um, non a non he e hepatitis and this virus was named as hepatitis c because this virus was having some kind of sequence similarities with the previously described gb virus a and gb virus b and in 1995 gene labs i mean almost during the same time gene labs discovered a virus in a in an individual with chronic hepatitis and these scientists the scientists who discovered who found this virus named it as hepatitis g virus because Uh, they 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 found they found in previous published literature say that this virus could cause hepatitis and this was also experimentally shown in tamarins and then later on over a period of period of time genomic analysis whole genome sequencing suggested that gb virus c and and hepatitis g virus that they described in gene labs in 1995 had 96% sequence homology and scientists found that they were uh, in fact two isolates of the same virus and therefore the the because the virus didn't cause any hepatitis this virus that was reported in in 1990 i mean i mean after 1995 didn't report any uh, pathological manifestations involving the liver and because this was misleading they named this virus as gbvc okay because there were two other viruses previously described viruses gbv a and gbv b and then subsequently um, ja- it was jack stapleton who convinced there were many other hepatitis i mean peggy viruses uh, reported gbv uh, gb viruses reported there was one gb virus which was reported in bangladesh and, and was also i think it has also been published in in plos pathogens which was named as gbv d and then there were many other gb viruses discovered in animal species and it was jack stapleton who convinced the international committee on Nomen- nomenclature of viruses and to and to to name this virus as the gbvc as the the human peggy virus one okay so you will see that uh, the the virus has uh, very close uh, uh, sequence relations w- relations with the uh, hepatitis c virus and also flavi virus the dengue virus and so on okay so it is closely related to uh, flavi virus pesti virus and hepasi virus so you have the pecky virus okay so this is the this is all about the the similarity of this virus with uh, related uh, you know flavi viruses so this was the uh, jack stapleton was the one who who coined the name uh, the gbvc s the who re, uh, renamed this gbvc c gbvc s the 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 pecky virus one which is a good bo- good boy virus of course as i said so this is the shape this is the structure of the virus so the virus is a spherical virus you will see that the virus has a has an envelope the envelope e1 protein and the e2 protein are the two important components of the virus and you will also see that the virus has a single stranded positive sense rna genome and there are several structural and uh, functional proteins uh, proteins that were uh, that were responsible for causing um, i mean for, for, for the virus to uh, you know necessitate the infection cycle the virus genome has a uh, polyprotein uh, which uh, originates from a uh, 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 genome sequence which has a 5 prime non coding region and 3 prime non coding region um, and you will see that the virus polyprotein can be acted upon by several uh, you know proteases the ns3 protease signal peptidase and and several other proteases which cleaves the the polyprotein into different structural and non structural proteins so these proteins have have uh of uh, important um uh, uh, i mean have significance in in maintaining the structure structural integrity and and of course there are some proteins which are in, important for necessitating the the infection process in 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 uh, lymphocytes and also other cells which the virus uh, infects so coming to the prevalence and distribution so what 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 is it all about how 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 much is is this world encountering this virus so recent studies one recent investigation uh, i mean um, by by blackard by blackard it all suggests that 
there is a high global prevalence of uh, piggy virus about one sixth of the global population appears to be zero positive for for piggy virus about 700 and roughly about 750 million individuals have uh, viremia as reported by stapleton and we uh, did uh, very very recently we also did an investigation and uh, we found that the the, the prevalence of this uh, the the prevalence of this uh, uh, this virus among HIV infected population is almost about about 50 percent, which is which is uh, which is relatively very high. And we also uh, currently are are uh, recruiting more patients to to study the, the real prevalence uh, 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 of of Peggy virus in the HIV infected population, which appears to be the high risk population for also for 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 Peggy virus because Peggy virus and HIV, HCV, and HBV all the mode of transmission is all the same. So the impact of what impact does Peggy virus have on HIV infection? As per the published literature, um, there, there is convincing evidence to show that, uh, conv convincing evidence to claim that uh, HIV, Peggy virus infection lowers the HIV RNA levels. It has also been shown that it increases the CD4 T cell counts in HIV infected individuals. Individuals who have been infected with HIV and Peggy virus progress slowly to the terminal stage of HIV infection. They uh, uh, respond, they respond uh, better to, to highly active antiretroviral therapy, HIV infected individuals. And, and appears, it appears that uh, Peggy virus infection also has something to do with improving the quality of life of HIV infected individuals. And it also very importantly, uh, last, last but not the least, uh, HIV, I mean, Peggy virus infection also reduces the, the rates of mortality from HIV infection. So, um, I will be uh, sharing a few uh, 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 findings. Uh, I, the, the presentation is going to be a very small presentation because um, uh, the findings are, uh, repeated, have repeatedly been shown by several researchers to convince that Peggy virus has a, has a beneficial impact on HIV infection. So, before we move into the, the mechanistics, um, this is how HIV infects a uh, target cell, a CD4 uh, T cell. So you will see that HIV can be classified into um, uh, T tropic uh, or uh, uh, X4 virus or uh, R5 virus, which is a uh, macrophage tropic. So you have a T lymphotropic virus HIV and macrophage tropic HIV. So this HIV virus can, can bind to a CD4 uh, receptor. And after binding the binding the CD4 uh, with the GP120, uh, the, there is a conformational change happening in the V3 loop of uh, the the GP120, which we expose the V3 loop, and thereafter the V3 loop is going to be recognized by the chemokine core receptors, uh, the, 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 which, which can be either CXCR4 or CCR5. So if it binds with, if the V3 loop binds with the CCR5, then it, it, it is called as a, the R5 virus. If it binds with the CXCR4, then the virus is considered as an X4 virus. So there are, there are basically the two types of uh, these, uh, you know, HIV viruses. Of course, there is also a mixed uh, hybrid virus, which can also bind both to CXCR4 as well as CXCR, CCR5. So what you see here is that, um, the virus. So now what happens is the, the, the CXCR4, you know, the, will be naturally be bound by, uh, you know, chemokine ligand. There, is, there are chemokine ligands that individuals will, will synthesize. So this chemokine ligand can be, can be a stroma derived factor, one which can bind to CXCR4. And therefore, if individuals have, I mean, the voluminous amounts of CSP of one, then, then the CXCR4 is always in getting in, get uh, you know would get engaged with the SCDF1, and therefore this might uh, uh, you know resist the HIV virus from the virus may be successful binding to CD4, but the the V3 loop may not be available. I mean V3 V3 loop may not may be available, but the the CXCR4 uh, component may not be able to available may not be available for it to bind to the V3 loop, and therefore. Present, more presence of SDF can confer resistance to infection by HIV. Likewise, 
the m tropic uh, in the in the in the cd4 t cells in some cd4 t cells you will see that CR, ccr5 is the co receptor uh, chemokine co receptor so these in the individuals produce mip1 alpha which is uh, ccr um, uh, you know which is ccl3 uh, 4 and 5 which is uh, mip1 alpha mip1 beta and branches so these are the natural chemokines natural ligands of ccr5 so assume that individuals have high levels of mip1 alpha 1 beta and branches the these chemokine ligands would have become engaged with ccr5 and therefore hiv virus may may not be able to successfully infect that particular cd4 species okay so this is what is the mechanism so what actually happens is hpv hpgv virus hp i mean peggy virus uh, you know um um Uh, you know, after infecting an individual, increases the expression of branches MIP1 alpha, MIP1 beta, and also SDF1, so that so that um, you know the, the the levels of these chemokine ligands are very high. These chemokines are very high, and these chemokines naturally, when they are synthesized, they they engage with the with the CCR5 or CXCR4. So at this instance, when HIV infects an individual. the virus may be able to successfully bind to cd4 core cd cd4 receptor but it may not be able to bind with the with the uh, the chemokine receptors uh, cxcr4 or ccr5 why because is the concentration of these chemokines are very high in individuals because they have already been infected with uh, peggy virus because peggy virus will enhance the expression of these chemokine uh, components probably you know resisting the i mean uh, contributing i mean uh, stopping the hiv virus from infecting uh, cd4 uh, positive t cells and moreover findings have also suggested uh, findings also suggest that gb virus infection the peggy virus infection can also down regulate ccr5 and cxcr4 on cd4 uh, t cells when these uh, chemokine receptors are uh, down regulated on cd4 t cells hiv virus may not be Uh, successful in infecting the cd4 t cells so there have been papers published in antiviral therapy and also in the lancet so these are findings which explain uh, the, the 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 beneficial impact uh, of uh, peggy virus on um, you know um, for for you know in favor of uh, you know individuals hiv infected individuals and you will also see that uh, there have been findings published in the new england uh, england journal of medicine uh, which suggests that peggy virus directly can inhibit hiv replication having said that uh, the virus as uh, you know as the potential to increase chemokine uh, components you know inhibiting the hiv virus uh, virus from infecting cd4 t cells the virus also appears to directly in i mean inhibit hiv replication so a study uh, conducted uh, uh, and published in the in the nejm suggests that uh, pbmcs when these pbmcs were stimulated with uh, with uh, pha and uh, il2 and uh, we had there were there were uh, different groups mock infected groups you will see that mock infection there is no um, uh, p24 hiv p24 uh, hiv infected hiv alone infected you see uh, high levels of uh, p24 hiv p24 and then hiv and gbv simultaneously uh, uh, the the t cells are exposed to hiv and gbv c you so you see that there is no not much of difference hiv first and then followed by uh, uh, gb uh, i mean peggy virus after 24 hours so you will see that um, again there is not much of difference but when you see that gb virus a person as uh, the, the cells have previously prior uh, i mean when the cell has you know become exposed to peggy virus and then subsequently the, the the cells are exposed to hiv you will see that the p24 levels are very less okay this is this tells that hiv has a, a, an inhibitory effect on hiv replication because p24 antigen uh, p24 presence is directly proportional to the to the rate of proliferation of hiv so this is another testimonial to uh, the claim that H, uh, hiv replication is inhibited by peggy virus
so uh, we uh, did an exploratory investigation of course with very less number of samples we managed to publish this in the viral immunology recently we found that uh, those individuals we had two groups so one group was uh, uh, piggy virus zero negative and the hiv positive and there was another group which was hpg v0 positive hiv infected individuals we found that the levels of uh, viral load was lesser in in piggy virus uh, zero positive individuals and we also found that the levels of um, um, uh, i think it is the levels of t cells the cd absolute cd4 cell count was higher among um, uh, zero positive hpg v0 positive uh, individuals so the, the sample size was lesser but still we were uh, we were uh, we had uh, some uh, conclusionary evidence to show that uh, piggy virus has a negative impact on hiv uh, infection and we also found that those individuals who had uh, uh, post i mean piggy virus uh, together with hiv infection had less levels of relatively lesser levels of uh, liver transaminases and also biliary transaminases as you can see here and there was also of course the sample size was less Uh, but still we were able to show that uh, uh, high levels of cd4 t cell count was associated with low levels of uh, plasma viral load in the especially in the in the piggy virus uh, you know zero positive group so this was an exploratory investigation that we did recently and has been published we are recruiting more patients um, again uh, in collaboration with savita university and uh, we expect that uh, you would uh, see more uh you know uh, interesting findings uh, in the in the in the prospective investigation and there to in support of uh, what we have found there have also been many other uh, when i was when i was looking into the literature when i was surveying the literature i could also uh, explore more findings so the this is a paper that was published in the archives of virology by uh, a team from from uh, from spain so they also suggest that their findings also suggest that gbv hcv um, gbvc hiv co-infection has uh, an impact as a detrimental impact on the hiv plasma viral load and also uh, uh, as a positive effect or positive impact on the cd4 t cell counts as you can see here and this also appears to be true with um, with uh, art so the uh, the infection also acts synergistically with art and as you will see that uh, the level of art in individuals who were, who were on art and the, with hiv gbvc co infection you will see that the hiv viral load is, uh, is significantly lesser as compared to those with no art and you will also see the same with the other surrogate markers of hiv infection the absolute cd4 counts as you will see here and also this was also true with aids and uh, individuals who uh, were not showing any signs of uh, terminal stage of hiv infection so gbvc i mean gbvc is nothing but uh, piggy virus so piggy virus hiv co infection appears to have a negative impact on even on disease progression as you will um, accept uh, you you will uh, concur with this this finding that was published very recently and uh, having said that uh, the virus uh, the gbv the, the piggy virus has an impact as a negative impact on hiv uh, replication uh, uh, infection of cd4 t cells and also um, you know con contributing to uh, decreased levels of viral plasma hiv viral load and also increasing the sur other surrogate markers uh, you know other other uh, you know uh, the surrogate markers like uh, cd4 and so on you will also see that G the piggy virus also appears to enhance innate immune responses so you will see that uh, loss of interferon producing cells and low uh, uh, interferon alpha levels are associated with high levels of hiv plasma viral load and this appears to have a role on on uh, play a role on hiv disease progression so you will also know that uh, uh, plasma cytodendritic cells produce high levels of interferon alpha and uh, this interferon alpha is sufficient enough to suppress hiv any viral replication uh, no matter whether it is hiv or or, uh, or any other viruses So interferon alpha uh, uh, type 1 interferon i mean type 1 interferons you have two interferons interferon alpha and interferon beta so these interferons are strong enough to suppress hiv infection and what happens in hiv infection is that uh, plasma cytodendritic cells are depleted and then that is a uh, very 
low levels of uh, interferon alpha production and this contributes to disease progression so what finding suggest is that hiv virus um, you know with gb virus co infection appears to have a negative impact on 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 um, on um, you know on uh, immune responses say for instance individuals who are infected with gbv and uh, and um, uh, peggy i mean and hiv uh, they they appears to appear to have high levels of interferon alpha you will see that protein kinase r which is actually a downstream um, molecule of interferon alpha uh, interferon type 1 interferon uh, signaling pathway is very high in gbv c positive individuals okay so you will see protein kinase r is responsible for for um, contributing to um, uh, 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 the transition of a cell into an antiviral cell okay so this peak protein kinase r uh, is, is a downstream protein which is expressed after a cell has become bound to uh, bound to interferon uh, type 1 interferon be it interferon alpha or interferon beta so you will see that also see that uh, mxa this is another uh, protein which is responsible for which uh, which is which helps in oligomerization in the oligomerization of uh, viral components you know after the virus has successfully entered into a into a cell the cell starts to produce interferon alpha and then this interferon alpha binds to interferon, I mean, interferon alpha receptors interferon beta receptors type 1 interferon receptors and then that cell is going to uh, enhance or upregulate the ex synthesis of mx mxa so what you see here is gbvc positive individuals have high levels of mxa and there is also oligodenophile 25 oligodenylate synthase this is again another type 1 interferon downstream signaling protein so this protein is also increased so these three proteins are very important from the interferon uh, signaling uh, uh, mechanism so you will see that gb virus the piggy virus infection with hiv uh, you know appears to contribute to high levels of you know these three proteins which are which are uh, you know very important which are key determinants of innate immune responses in an individual and then likewise interferon alpha receptors and also interferon alpha you know you will see that their levels are relatively higher in the uh, gbvc uh, positive individuals with hiv infection so the next thing is that we also asked whether hiv um, gbvc co infection uh, with hiv Uh, polarizes skews the the th uh, to the towards the th1 polarization contrary to what has already been shown by uh, others um, and of course a few others have also supported uh, have also supported our findings um, you know our findings are also um, 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 against uh, some of the findings which have already been shown by others in that uh, ours was not th1 polarization but rather is too polarized so you will see that um, uh, of course this potentially could be because of the lesser uh, number of samples that we have used in our investigation so this uh, tells that you know there is there is some kind of uh, um, inconsistency in uh, in uh, these findings because um, some groups have, uh, have uh, um, stated that you know the gbvc can skew the th polarization towards the th1 and some others have suggested that the th2 uh, polarization is is abundant and uh, our findings is contrary to the th1 uh, polarization concept so we found that the the gbvc promotes uh, rather th2 polarization as you will see those those the individuals who have have uh, uh, more of um, who have zero uh, positive or zero positive for hpg had um, uh, zero negative for hpg appears to have high levels of um these th2 uh, cytokine so which tells that um uh, uh gbvc has something to do with the th uh, polarization uh, components and we also found that the il17 levels were very high in the hpgv zero positive individuals which is uh, which is something um, others have not shown so far so we found two important cytokines the il i mean one important cytokine one key cytokine il7 which we had a positive correlation with uh, with cd4 t cell counts and uh, and uh, there were also many other uh, components which were showing negative uh, correlation this uh, um, this tells that you know there is some kind of inconsistencies which 
probably may be improved when we uh, increase the, the the sample size but others have there are vast majority of other uh, findings suggesting that uh, uh, peggy virus infection can harness th1 polarization so um, next that we wanted to see what whether uh, any uh, any mechanisms uh, from the apoptosis uh, component was uh, was involved in in uh, in protecting uh, uh, protecting uh, i mean uh, the cd4 t cells from apoptosis so hi hpgv appears to uh, protect uh, the cd4 t cells from apoptosis because you know that apoptosis is one of the key mechanisms which uh, which is utilized exploited by the hiv to to compromise see, the quality of cd4 t cells so uh, what findings suggest that is that uh, uh, peggy virus can can protect the cd4 t cell it it it, uh, it uh, you know safeguard the cd4 t cells from undergoing apoptosis so you will see that this finding uh, um, has come from germany which tells that the the fas uh, fas is a is a uh, uh, an uh, is a biomarker of apoptosis so you will see that gbvc uh, infected individuals hiv infected individuals had the very less levels of fas expression on their on their cd4 t cells and uh, which was significant significantly lesser than those individuals who had uh, who were uh, uh, negative for uh, you know peggy virus infection and uh, with, again with hiv infection so you will see that the virus the peggy virus in peggy virus protects the cd4 t cells from undergoing programmed cell death and um, we uh, t cell activation i mean immune cell act immune activation is one of the important mechanisms Uh, which um, uh, explains the uh, the uh, explains the the pathogenesis of of uh, HIV infection. So, hyperimmune activation is is one of the very widely accepted mechanisms in HIV infection because this uh, you know in, increased rates of uh, activation you know prolonged state of activation of immune cells appears to uh, to um, to uh, to take the cells towards a process called immune exhaustion so we we i was i was interested to know whether uh, immune activation was was uh, was uh, was inhibited by peggy virus whether uh, the peggy virus has any any uh, impact on on immune activation so i found a paper that uh, tells that um, uh, peggy virus positive individuals have had high less levels of b cell activation so you will see that uh, b, i mean activation that uh, cd8 uh, cd86 is a marker of uh, b cell activation so cd19 is a marker of b cell and uh, cd86 is a marker of uh, uh, hyperimmune activation in b cells so you will see that h hpv zero positive individuals have had less levels of b cell activation and this is again an important testimony uh, to the fact that uh, to the claim that uh, gbvc ha has as a as a negative impact on on immune activation and next i uh, i explored whether whether uh, peggy virus had any impact on on t cell activation so t cell activation also uh, uh, progresses the cell towards t cell exhaustion so what i found was um, uh, so there was there was a paper published by stapleton in 2012 uh, in in plos 1 so here you will see that the um uh, there there were the, a few um uh, t cell activation markers so two t cell activation markers have been studied cd1 is cd38 and the other one is hla dr so you will see there are uh, there were three groups study groups hiv gbv positive hiv gbv uh, group hsv gbv group and gbv alone group okay so there were three groups and these three groups are further uh, bifurcated Uh, with, uh based on their positivity uh, for uh, uh, positivity or negativity for uh, gb virus you will see that the levels of wherever you find the gbv you will see that the levels of cd38 and hladr are lesser okay this tells that uh, peggy virus has a potential to reduce the or ameliorate the the the, the markers of t cell activity so uh, you will see that the 
the the the research has been conducted on on total cd4 t cells naive cd4 t cells central memory t cells effector cd4 t cells and effector memory cd4 t cells and also cd8 t cells across all the different uh, study uh, you know cell groups you will see that wherever there is G gbv the levels of cd38 and hla dr which are markers of t cell activation were uh, significantly lesser and this is another um, um, evidence to the fact that gbvc has uh, the potential to um, alleviate t cell activation and uh, this is going to be very important uh, when it comes to um, to uh, understanding the importance of the quality of t cells quality of immune cells in in hiv infection and then there was also one more study which uh, which has been published in the aids uh, journal uh, this this paper is also originated from appears to originated from uh, from uh, from spain so here again they have shown these people have shown that um, uh, it has uh, got a, a, a positive correlation with the viral load uh, is positively correlated with with cd4 t cells so um, i mean uh, um, uh, more the viral load lesser is the uh, cd4 t cell counts and then the uh, uh, the study also tells the same with cd8 uh, cd38 on cd4 cd8 and also on on the uh, ccr5 positive and ccr uh, ccr5 positive cd4 as well as ccr5 positive cd8 t cell so you will see that the levels of your immune activation markers on uh, uh, t cells both cd4 as well as cd8 t cells were uh, significantly uh, lesser on on uh, on these t cells this is probably because of the impact uh, piggy virus has on 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 hiv uh, virus and then um, there has also been uh, uh, studies conducted uh, whether the virus has any additive effect any any um, synergistic effect with uh, antiretroviral th uh, therapy so you will see that uh, this paper that was published in hiv medicine uh, tells that um, uh, uh, antiretroviral treatment uh, together with um, hiv i mean piggy and as well as piggy virus infection appears to uh, reduce the viral load um, and this was uh, this was also longitudinally investigated and this longitudinal study also tells that the viral loads were uh, were um, uh, were lesser over a period of time all due to the positive impact piggy virus has on on um, on uh, the the on uh, uh, you know together with antiretroviral therapy on these individuals who were uh, who were on who were uh, you know having hiv infection and you will see uh, the 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 findings across uh, uh, weeks of therapy okay so the, the the individuals are longitudinally followed up and there is a very clear cut demarcation between the uh, gbv rna positive and gbv um, rna negative uh, individuals who were on antiretroviral therapy and, uh, people uh, scientists scientists have also suggested that uh, piggy virus also appears to improve the survival rates uh in individuals who are infected with hiv so piggy virus infection so this has been published in the new england journal of medicine this paper tells that um the survival rates of uh, individuals who are possibly positive for gbv e uh, e2 protein is is uh, much higher than those who are negative for for uh, piggy virus infection so individuals who are negative for piggy viral infection they didn't survive longer and um, uh, those who were positive for piggy virus uh, e1 uh, e2 um, protein you know uh, piggy virus infection were survived uh, for a uh, for uh, for more uh, uh, you know time uh, more uh, uh, more time you know they they survived longer than than those who were negative for piggy virus infection so so you can see here this is a cox uh, regression analysis um, conveying the information that piggy virus also has the potential to improve the rates of survival among individuals with hiv infection so this is again um, the the hiv i mean the the cd4 and the 
CD4, you know, T cell counts, you know, were more in in individuals who are surviving uh, with with uh, GBVC who were positive for GBVC compared to those who were negative uh, for GBVC. You know, and these individuals were uh, were um, uh, longitudinally in a study uh, for uh, survival. So, um, and then the virus, uh, the the virus was also slowly progressive in individuals who were positive for Peggy virus infection, and this was also uh, correlating with the the Th1 uh, cytokine profile. Of course, we didn't uh, see uh, Th1 preponderance, but rather we could see that. Uh, the the preponderance was towards the th17 uh, profile but we we uh, need more 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 uh, you know uh, samples to really uh, see whether uh, you know this this is uh, this was really happening uh, with 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 what has already been shown here with th1 cytokine profile so you will see that individuals were uh, you know progressing slower and they were uh, you can see here they were uh, longitudinally, uh, you know, monitored for for over a period of time, 1989 to 1997, and these individuals were maintaining high levels of um, um, uh, IL-12, which IL-2, which is a which is a very important uh, Th1 cytokine, and also Th IL-12, which is the which is one of the important uh, Th1 uh, polymer, I mean, uh, polarizing cytokine. Okay, and then uh, the levels of IL-4, IL-10, and um, were were uh, you know lesser in individuals with um, uh, HIV-1 and uh, GBVC positive, because uh, as as shown by these these scientists, the levels of IL IL T IL-4 is a Th2 cytokine, IL-10 is a Th2 cytokine, of course, an immune immunosuppressive or immunoregulatory cytokine. So you will see that. Uh, the 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 individuals uh, cytokine profiling was was really healthy and this was all maintained by the the piggy virus um, uh, you know which was able to suppress hiv viral uh, virus viral uh, replication uh, as very clearly shown in this in this paper and um, uh, very recently there has also been a paper uh, published uh, from thailand uh, together with uh, groups from the us they uh, this they um, uh, they concluded that gbvc has the potential to re reduce the risk of hiv transmission to infants so reduce uh, um, mother to child transmission of hiv is associated uh, with gbvc infection so this is a paper that was published in the journal of infectious diseases i think it was in the, the clinical in clinical infectious diseases and this paper very clearly tells that the virus has the potential to also reduce the by reducing the replication of HIV, uh, the virus was also successful in reducing the virus from getting transmitted into the into the uh, into the uh, fetal compartment. So to summarize, HIV um, um, uh, is, is interfered successfully by uh, research suggests that HIV is successfully inter intervened by by GB virus. The virus has the E2, the virus E2 protein of this virus has the potential to uh, interfere with HIV binding and uh, subsequent fusion of HIV with the with CD4 T cells. And there are the, the NS5A protein has the potential to uh, induce secretion of uh, the natural ligand of CXCR4, which is the stoma derived factor one. And NS5A also has the potential to downregulate HIV entry receptors, which are the CXCR4 and the CCR5. So any ind ind individuals who have been infected with Peggy virus will downregulate CCR5 as well as CXCR4 because the NS5A protein has the potential to downregulate CCR4 and CXCR, CXCR4 and CCR5. And then downstream, uh, NS5A also appears to induce Th1 cytokine and reduce the expression of Th2 cytokines. Of course, we didn't see this probably because of the less number of samples that uh, we uh, used in our experiments. And E2 and NS5A protein appears to inhibit HIV replication. And uh, this has been convincingly uh, shown uh, from by multiple groups uh, globally. And uh, GBVC appears to also um, improve the performance of uh, plasma cytoidentitic cells by 
by increasing the levels of uh, type 1 interferon uh, you know signaling uh, downstream proteins the pk i mean protein kinase uh, uh, pkl and uh, the mx1 and also the 25ox oligodinylic synthase so it also has the potential to increase the levels of rantis uh, mit1 alpha mit1 beta which are the natural ligands of ccf5 and uh, it also appears to increase the levels of spf1 which is the which are the natural ligands of cxcr4 chemokine co receptor hb i mean gbvc also appears to down regulate the expression of cd38 which are which are the markers of immune activation it also appears to have an impact on hla dr which again is the marker of uh, t cell activation and the b cell activation marker cd86 has also been found to be uh, intervened by gbvc and moreover uh, there is also convincing evidence that gbvc has the potential to also down regulate pas which are uh, you know markers of uh, uh, t cell apoptosis and you will also see that uh, gbvc has many other uh, important uh, uh, roles especially gbvc intervenes um, inhibits hiv by by inhibiting uh, by uh, by uh, directly intervene uh, directly in directly you know stopping curtailing the replication of hiv virus okay so uh, so to conclude gbvc has not been convincingly associated with any disease it is uh, the virus is successful in infecting the liver compartment but it doesn't cause any pathology and therefore uh it has it doesn't appear it doesn't have any negative impact on the on the health of an individual it protects against hiv uh and this is so suggestive of uh, a beneficial symbiotic relationship uh, with the human host so improved survival of hiv positive individuals is something that is uh, 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 that is going to be uh, very important uh, in the long run and diminished immune activation and t cell proliferation which limits hiv replication and also slows down hiv disease progression and although infection may persist for long most uh, individuals most healthy individuals will clear the viremia within 2 years of infection and therefore a longer infection uh, a protracted course of infection with gbv in hiv infected individuals appears to prolong uh, the the rate of disease progression among hiv infected individuals but still there are some outstanding questions that remains unanswered so what are the mechanisms by which by which uh, pegi virus alters t cell activation and il2 signaling pathways what factors are important for the paracrine effects of uh, the virus on t cell activation and proliferation whether this virus has any cellular reser reservoirs for affect the cellular reservoirs of hiv latent hiv and uh, and what factors influence the persistence of this pegi virus infection in the host uh, are remain unanswered so these are some of the important uh, research questions which uh, remain unanswered and if these components are uh, uh, you know are explored possibly we might uh, you know be uh, uh, you know availing some hints how exactly the virus you know uh, could prove to be uh, useful against against hiv so people have uh, already started using the the pegi virus for therapeutic modalities and um, several trials are underway especially jack sapleton's group is is uh, specifically um, looking at uh, uh, exploring uh, some of these unanswered questions and um, so thank you so much um, and i i thank uh, once again the organizers of this meeting for providing me an opportunity to talk about this goodbye virus thank you so much